Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NFL Thoughts. Now, I have not made a video in three days, and I got three valid reasons. Uh, one, I was sick. Uh, two, um, I was I was sick. And three, um, well, once again, I was sick. Um, yeah, basically those three days, um, I didn't, you know, really, um, feel like doing much of nothing those three days because I wasn't feeling the best. But, um, today, we, um, our health is good. We are back, and it's time to talk about a couple things. So, uh, if you saw last night's game, well, uh, good for you, because I did not, because the NFL, they want to get money out of our pockets, you know, basically. They want to get money out of our pockets. Like, look at this. Like, bruh. Come on, man. Nonetheless, um, yeah, basically you have to watch the game. The only way you're going to be able to watch the game is if you have Amazon Prime Video. And unfortunately, I do not have that. And somewhere along the line, we're going to have to make time to uh, eventually get that so we can, you know, get an Amazon account. And so we can actually be able to watch Thursday night games. You're probably thinking, it's only uh, one game out of the week that, the one NFL game out of the week that you're missing you know, you still get to watch the other games. No, 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 no. I want to watch every game, man. I want to watch every game. So, nonetheless, uh, I was only able to watch the highlights and check the box scores. And so, the score was 27-24 Chiefs. Chiefs won. And I was like, well... Herbert versus Mahomes quarterback battle strikes again. You know, like, these games always seem to be coming down to uh, one-score games all the time. But I thought it was a wild finish. You know, judging from what I saw as far as the final score being 27-24, I thought it was a close game all the way. I thought it was a wild finish, but I look at the highlights and I'll be quite honest with you. It was technically kind of like a game where there was technically a tale of two halves. You know what I mean? It was technically a tale of two halves. Like the Chargers had controlled the first half. They were up 17-7 and then the Chiefs you know, rallied back, got back into the game, and, and then they, you know, took control of the second half. So it wasn't, like, neutral really at any point between the two teams, except for when it was 0-0 in the first quarter. Nonetheless, um, you know, Burrow threw for over 300 yards, three touchdowns, one interception that technically gave gave the Chiefs the spark that they needed. And it was an interception by Jalen Watson, a pick six. And that basically turned the complexion of that game completely over to Kansas City after that. And uh, the Chargers, unfortunately, were not able to recover. They scored a late touchdown to make it 27-24. And they tried on an onside kick, and they had a chance, but Chiefs player recovered it. So that was game over. And Patrick Mahomes, it wasn't, you know, what people expect. You know, his 400 yards, five touchdowns. He threw for 235 yards, two touchdowns, and no picks. 
And at the end of the day, I'll take efficiency, you know, any day of the week. I like quality over quantity. So Mahomes, you know, did technically outplay Justin Herbert if you are a person who likes efficiency. And honestly, I heard, you know, Skip and Shannon on Undisputed talking about, well, mainly Skip talking about how Mahomes should have been picked off two or three times in that game. And it's just kind of like, okay, he should have been picked off two or three times. Well, it didn't count because the Chargers kept dropping it. So it doesn't matter. You know, like, it doesn't matter if, you know, people want to say, you know, Mahomes had played awful. He should have had two or three picks. Well, he didn't. Did the, did the Chargers defenders catch the ball, yes or no? No. Well, then. So, that's all I got to say about, you know, them. But, so, yeah. Mahomes, as far as I'm concerned, he managed the game. You know, something that I would like for him to do more. You know, he took what the defense gave him. You know, I feel like this is a different Mahomes than what we had seen, obviously, his previous four years, or first three and a half years, technically, because second half of last year, he kind of matured a little bit, and then he kind of went back to being Mahomes again in the second half of that AFC title game. But I think he's slowly starting to try to build on making himself a better quarterback. He already knows he's a great thrower, he wants to become a great quarterback. There's a difference between being a great thrower and being a great quarterback. And Mahomes is obviously working on that. <clears throat> His resume is already incredible for the short amount of time he's been in the league. So, yeah, he's done well for himself so far in his, uh, you know, short career so far in the NFL. Now, I want to talk, I want to talk about the Bengals-Cowboys game ahead. So, um, this game, like Skip said, and Shannon too, this needs to be a Zeke, they said this would be a Zeke game, nah. This needs to be a Zeke and Pollard game. That's what this needs to be. We need to feed Zeke and Pollard the rock. And not that I would expect, you know, the Dallas Cowboys to, you know, eat rocks on their off days, you know, cement and bricks and stuff like that. I don't think they're that tough. But there is no doubt that these two running backs, Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard, they definitely need to be fed the rock. You know, we need to pound the rock, man. Pound the rock. Pound the rock. So, yeah, needless to say, we need to run the ball in this game. This is a Zeke, like I said, this is a Zeke and Pollard game. You know, this is about, this is a game that the ground crew can win. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, these next few games without Dak in the lineup is going to have to be a Zeke and Pollard game all the time, you know? Unless the teams want to stack eight men in the box and make it too easy for us to obviously throw the ball. Speaking of throwing the ball, uh, CeeDee Lamb, apparently he's pissed off, uh, and he should be, you know? Um, he had a bad game la on Sunday night, you know? Two catches, 29 yards, he was targeted 11 times. He was also triple covered, you know. Well, I wouldn't say he was really triple covered, but they were, they ran him, the Buccaneers ran him into a lot of three-man brackets, you know, three-man bracket coverages to where he really couldn't get very much room to roam. Um, but, yeah, so he's pissed, and he wants to go out there on Sunday and prove how much of a number one receiver he really is. And I do believe he's a number one receiver. 
I just don't believe he, of course, you know, of course, I just don't believe he showed that on Sunday night. Um, so, yeah, Cooper Rush, you know, playing the game manager role, you know, just kind of stay out of the way a little bit and hand the ball off to Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard and let that, let those dudes run and let those offensive linemen move people, give them some confidence, don't have them having to pass block where they got to, you know, backpedal and move laterally all the time on pass plays, don't have them be able to, you know, lean on guys, move people around and open up holes, because I feel like that's where this offensive line can be at their strong suit. I mean, just think, Ezekiel Elliott ran the ball 10 times last week. And he averaged 5.2 yards a carry, 52 yards. But, yeah, that's what we need to do offensively. Now, defensively, I feel like I don't need, I don't have all that much issues with the uh, defense. Um, and I'm sorry, but I do not want to hear it about people feeling like, oh, it looks like y'all still got some run defense concerns. Y'all let Leonard Fournette rush for over 100 last week. First of all, I believe I've said this before. Um, the offense kept going three and out over and over again, having to punt the ball and putting our defense back on in the field. And they were tied as far as I'm concerned, they were tired, you know, and, you know, it's kind of hard to be able to go out there, you know, and do that when the offense is forcing you to have to go out there and do that, like, just over and over again, almost like every minute or two or so, you know, not to say it was that big of a gap as far as time of possession and us being on the field, but I'm just saying, Offense had our defense on the field a lot, and I feel like if we can win the time of possession battle and give our defense some rest, you know, and have them, you know, have them fresh when they do get on the field, I think we should be all right, you know, as far as, you know, that is, con you know, I really don't have any major concerns over my run defense. I think my run defense, we're pretty solid. We just got to, you know, be fresh and not being put out there on the field over and over again like that. So, you know, Joe Mixon, he doesn't really worry me at all. You know, I think we'll, you know, do fine. What the hell? So, yeah. Um, and then also the other thing. Joe Burrow on Sunday got sacked seven times. I said it was like five times or so. Um, but, no, nah, he got sacked seven times on Sunday. And I understand the Steelers have T.J. Watt, who had a torn pectoral. Pectoral. Ah, it's hard for me to say that word for some reason. A torn pectoral muscle um, in week one. And it wasn't anything major that he needs surgery, but he's going to be out for several weeks, just like Dak Prescott. But Dak actually needed the surgery. But nonetheless, the Steelers feasted on Joe Burrow. And all that $180 million that the Bengals, you know, did to help revamp their offensive line. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, how did that work out for y'all? Uh, I still think this Bengals offensive line has some major concerns and some major problems. Not that, not that I feel like we got uh, T.J. Watt and Cameron Hayward on our team just like they do, but we got a Micah Parsons and D-Law, and as well as uh, a couple or a few other rushers that we can depend on. And... I'm going to go out on a limb and say that we're probably going to get, you know, at least four sacks in this game. You know, Micah Parson, you already know he's going to be in the mix. He's going to be in the fold. Uh, he's going to get some sack lunches on uh, Joe Burrow. Uh, no homo. But, 
Yeah, um, I, sh you know, expect to see no less than four sacks in this game. I think that we're going to feast on Joe Burrow and, you know, as I don't really fear Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, and those guys. I feel like as long as we can take care of Jamar Chase, double him, you know, Trayvon and a safety over the top, you know, I think we'll be fine, you know, as far as that. You know, make sure that a linebacker maybe is um, in the area if he's running some slant routes over the middle. But, yeah, I think I can trust our secondary guys to be able to beat them one-on-one. -on -one. So, as far as my prediction, I'm predicting a 24-17 to 17 victory. All right, 24 to 17. I know last week I said 27 17, but I'm predicting 24 to 17 Cowboys win on Sunday. Bam. So that is it. That has been my time. And this is NFL Thoughts out.